Ilko Predicta debutante. Picked it up yesterday. Excuse the sounds. Got construction going on next door. But I picked this up yesterday. Came with the TV stand. And it looked to be in pretty good shape. It still has the original antenna. It's got the back. It's got the knobs. Has the back for the CRT. <clears throat> There's some dust inside the plastic protector. Um, still has the contrast knob and pull for power, which still works. <clears throat> you got the gold trim coming up a little bit right there. This is coming off a little bit. Um, this is not the original grill cloth. I guess it was switched out at some point. Um, I believe the original Philco logo that's usually right here is still, I can feel it raised up a little bit, so I still think it's in there. Um, so I tried powering it up with a Variac and saw all the magic smoke coming out. So, um, I looked inside, really dusty inside, and it was a capacitor, bumblebee capacitor, that was completely cracked down the middle. So, I do want to clean it and re recap it and see if everything's hooked up correctly, but first thing I want to do is test the CRT to see how it's testing. This is how you access the back of the TV, the back of the CRT. The back came off nice. <clears throat> Look at that. So, yeah, Philco. Let me get a flashlight. Okay. 17 DRP4, 2.68 volt. Huh, for some reason I thought these had the 6.3 volt, um, up, basically not replacement, but upgrade. All right, so I got my BNK model 465 CRT tester. Um, I have it switched off, got the correct adapter. I'm gonna go ahead and get this hooked up in here nice and snug. <clears throat> okay, so here it is on the tester. 17 DRP4, 2.68 volts, connector A, or test socket A. Uh, G2 volts are always going to be at 300 for this. Um, G1 volts stay at zero for now. So, I'll go ahead and put this to zero to three volts to put in. Let's put the adjuster all the way down. It's on the black and white setting. Meter to S, because that's what it says to do. So let's go ahead and put it up to heater adjust. Okay. <clears throat> so it's at um, zero volts right now. So we're gonna bring it up. It even has a little mark for, the, for this uh, type of tube. So we'll slowly bring it up. All right. So I'm gonna let it uh, just sit on this for a few minutes before I attempt the short test. So I'm gonna go ahead and test for shorts. No, none of these lights sh should light up if there are no shorts. So I'm gonna go switch it to shorts. All right, good, no shorts. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and continue with the emission test. Um, set the function switch to the emission position. Oh, baby. That is what I'm talking about. Right there should do it. Alright, so we are at 35 G1 volts. And if we look back here, right here, 
Um, any G1 volts between 28 and 72 means you have a good tube. You can tell here where we're cut off, we're at 31 G1 volts. We got a good tube. Back on a mission. Dude, this, this is good. That is a good tube right there. So now that I know that the tube tests really well, uh, I'll go ahead and get started with the uh, electronically restoring it. So here's the inside. You can see it is rusty and dusty. I can barely see the board itself because there's just a layer of dust. Um, I opened up the high volt or where the flyback is. Um, and it's pretty clean in there. And the flyback looks good. Uh, I still will apply a super corona dope sealant over it. So to prevent any arcing that probably will happen. But that'll be a little later down the line. I just want to get this cleaned up right now. Got the board out. And this thing is dirty. You can't even see the board there. You can see a little bit of the tracings, traces there. This thing is dirty. But everything looks original. Which is cool. Oh, and I found a... So, there's a capacitor that completely cracked in half. And then we have another one right there. Completely cracked open. So I don't know which one of those smoked, smoked out. Um, but obviously they all need to be replaced. I'm gonna go outside and, and dust this thing off. All right, here's a better video of all the dust in there. Brought it outside onto my porch. And we're gonna give this a nice cleaning. I brought uh, sandpaper to get some of this rust, rust off the bottom off. A little paint brush to help get the dust out of there, so we'll see. All right, I used the rest of my compressed air, and let me take my paintbrush, just wiping off dust slowly but surely. This thing is looking tenfold better than it was. Um, so now you can see the board, uh, and I realize that there is another uh, cracked capacitor right here. So I got, I found three cracked capacitors. Um, I have replacement couplets on the way, um, but I don't think those are going to be necessary to at least get a picture on the screen. Um, I think what I'm going to do is replace all the capacitors. Oh, another cracked capacitor. Look at that. Four. Four cracked bumblebees. They've all, they've all been bumblebees so far or black beauties, as some people call them. Um, I'm also going to get um, new electrolytics to replace these. Um, I might test them to see how they do. As long as they're not shorted, they should be good to at least get an image on the screen. Um, I still gotta clean out this case a little bit because there's still a lot of dirt in the speaker is really just completely dust. I mean this this stuff falls off really easily so I'm gonna try to preserve what there is left of it. Um, but yeah still gonna clean up clean it up a little bit and hopefully unhook the board and Philco when it came to serviceability, really, I mean, to get the board out 
you gotta take all of these cables, these wires that are connected, and take them all off. And I mean, these cables go, you know, all around the board. So maybe I'll just, there's more over here. Maybe I'll just keep the board on, cut out the capacitors, and um, just put the new capacitors in right there so I don't have to mess with the bottom at all. Or mess with getting the board out, I mean. Um, I want to test the tubes to see how they test. It's just the, the uh, tube sockets on these Philco sets. Um, they break really easy. It's very thin metal. So whenever you take a tube out, put it back in, uh, those little metal little tabs that hook onto the leads on the bottom of the tube get weaker and they break. And you soon have to wiggle it to make it work. I found this tube interesting. But this one right here is pretty caked on the inside. Right there. It's got so I so I don't know if that means that this tube would, or this TV would run a lot, but this this tube has got some hours on it. Um, but stay tuned. I'm gonna replace the capacitors and get back to it. So this was a interesting turn of events. So these tubes I was talking about that look caked. I replaced the 6AX4 because it looked, well I tested it and it, was, it wasn't it was even showing up on emission, my tester, so I, I did have a replacement for that that tested well with no shorts, so I put that in. This, I was trying to take out of the socket to test and it crumbled, absolutely crumbled. So I'm gonna see if I have this, a replacement in my stash, and if not, I'll have to uh, order a replacement. I mean, all the other tubes seem, you know, fine. It's just, uh, just these two tubes would seem just like they were caked on the inside. Like, just so much voltage was going to them for years. So, I'm gonna check if I have another replacement. Um, 6DQ6. 6GW6. I need to check my stash. Alright, so my electrolytics came in to replace this, which was really off spec. Um, so I just sort of botched it in there for right now. So, if you remember, these two tubes were shattered. Right when I tried to wiggle them, the glass shattered. Just found out that this tube was also cracked and I had a replacement. All the other tubes seem to be fine. <laughs> it wants my attention. Um, so all the other tubes seem to be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and try turning this thing on and see what happens. Sounded like we had high voltage for a second there. Let it warm up a little more. All right. Um, there we go. Holy shit. That's what I'm fucking talking about, baby. That is what I'm talking about. Okay, so I gotta, I gotta, uh, fuck, I'm so pumped right now, wow. Um, so I got a, uh, a cold solder joint I need to take care of. That's why that tube was fucking up. Excellent. Got an image on the screen. That is big, big progress. Wow. Messing around with... Alright, those controls. Alright, that's vertical. Oh, bright. Oh, wow. 
that screen gets very bright. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Um, I think that's horizontal hold. God, that is a nice raster, man. That is a really strong tube. Wow, that's excellent. That is excellent. Okay, let me shut this off for a second. Oh, wow. I am very, very excited. Excellent. Okay, I am looking for... I'm gonna see how the tuner works, if I'm getting anything. <clears throat> oh, I just got horizontal failure. There we go, tube's back on. So no sound. Not even getting any scratchiness. Um, I might go ahead and test all of these tubes individually and see what we got. Get that cold solder joint taken care of and then I'll, I'll circle back. last clip you just saw I got an image on the screen but there's no vertical or horizontal sync so I know there's a, a tube for that so I'm gonna go ahead and check that tube I got the new K network so I'm gonna go ahead and put those put these on tonight um, hopefully that'll fix the vertical sync issue I'll go ahead and test the vertical and horizontal sync tube and see how it tests. All right, back to trying to fix the predictor. Um, I haven't turned the set on for a while, so let's just see what we get. I have movie plan on. I don't want to hook up a, a dot generator just yet. I just want to see how this comes through. All right. Let's see what we got. I hear the vertical. still finicky. Um, why am I not getting high voltage? Ooh, that's hot. Don't go debutante. Got an image on the screen. I don't remember the last video I did. This has been one of the worst restoration, not worst, but just the toughest restorations ever. I replaced all resistors over one meg Test all, or tested all tubes for emission and shorts, replace those, replace K networks, paper caps, electrolytics. Um, I had to Dremel off the bottom of the board, like the bottom of the chassis, so I could uh, get to the, um, the tube sockets. I replaced the tube sockets, um, just because some of them were making a shitty connection. 
So yeah, I have a pattern generator set up. So up on the top, it's either the vertical lin linearity pot resistor needs to be changed, uh, but I'm thinking that might be a resistor in the damper section that's incorrect. I think that because it, this is the same effect I had on my Westinghouse. Um, dots. So yeah, it has a good image, right? But when I hook up a uh, DVD player, um, nothing comes through on the tuner. It's so strange because it's coming in so clear on the pattern generator. So I'm, I'm just pretty confused right now. I, I need to troubleshoot a little more, but uh, I got new video IF tubes come in because one of them has a bunch of shorts in it so that might have something to do with it. Got new tuner tubes because I think they tested a little low on emission. Uh, just to really cover all bases because I want to be able to use this television. And the tube tests really well. I mean, I'm not even close to full brightness. That's full brightness. Like it is, it can get very bright, which is great. Tube test great. So yeah, hopefully I can give you an update soon. I'm ready for this project to be done. I replaced the grill cloth on the front. So I need to cut out the hole there for the uh, tuner switch. And over there as well for the power. And I have all the pieces to put back together. But yeah, I mean, this is a pretty good, pretty good image. Yoke seems like it needs adjusting just a little bit to the, a little bit to the right. Or, you know, turn it a little bit to the right. But yeah, I need to figure out the why a uh, coax cable isn't really producing a signal. Strange.